Hello everyone, it has been a long journey going over all the metas of Splatoon 2, but we're here with the finale, the 5.0s of Splatoon 2. Did the devs end the game in a great spot? We're gonna find out, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more from me, and without further ado, let's wrap up Splatoon 2. So like with patch 4.9, this one is also not on Nintendo's English patch notes website, but anyway, this dropped on the 31st of July 2019, and was also the last major content update giving us Splatfest and PBs, but that's not important. So first up on the patch notes, as per usual at this point, is shooter buffs for the Sploosh, Junior, Aerospray, Splash, Splattershot, 52, and Enzap. They are all going to be given an extra 17% extra damage against Booyah Bomb. Kenzo Splattershot Pro was starting to fall off, but this basically kind of sealed it. From here on out, it would kind of be a more unoptimal pick and not really have any super good niche. It wouldn't be a bad weapon, but yeah, it wouldn't really be in a great spot anymore. In addition to that, it also required one more sub of main power up to reach 99.9, because why not? Luna got a slightly larger blast radius, which was pretty Pretty decently impactful even if it didn't really push Luna into the meta. Flings a roller would get 12% increased ink from a vertical flick which is pretty significant since nowadays Flo Flings is really good at missile output second only to vanilla jet at its range. Try had weird dead zones in its hitbox where it looked like it would hit and it didn't and it took until 5.0 for them to fix it but they did it here. Not would get decreased shot variance which sounds important but it's already so little that you can barely tell and both Dapples and Glugas would use slightly less ink in standard fire. None of those being super important but you know, nice buffs. Some nice buffs for the aggressive specials in the game. Inkjet shots traveling slightly faster and hammer swinging a bit faster. The normal splat dualies got to go down to 180, but outside of that, no notable points for special changes. So outside of a bit of extra nerfs to Kensa Splatter Shop Pro, I think this was a really good patch. Like the only thing I think they should have added is reducing the points for special for K-Pro to 200 or maybe 190. And I think it honestly would have been perfect. All good changes in this patch increase some good diversity, which is what we always like. There's a bit more shooters, Nautilus would start to see use because of some one tricks like Bagel, and then there would be more people picking it up later into the game's lifespan. So spoiler alert, Not becomes a pretty good weapon. I mean, it kind of already was, but people didn't use it as much, but yeah, now people are using Not more, I guess. There were four weapons that gained a bit of popularity this patch. The L3D would easily be the main one, being great for inkjet output, requiring a low amount of main power, but being pretty good at everything, and since this patch buffed inkjet a little bit, it would definitely start to see some increased usage. This patch is also where we saw more Splattershot Jr., probably about as much as NZAP at the time, though I'd still argue NZAP was the slightly better support. This would be where we started to see both being interchanged a bit more, rather than Zap, Kunder, H3 from the previous few patches. However, with more shooters and a bit more short range in general, as well as people starting to optimize the MPU damage up weapons and looking for an answer to L3, led to Bamboo rising in a lot of popularity and taking its place as the prime new MPU weapon. Oh, and on top of that, Firefin saw a bit more use in zones because it still painted pretty solid and wasn't as high a points for special as the normal charger, so it was pretty good at getting bomb rush. And it was a nice answer to bamboo or inkjet. Patch 5.1 dropped on January 6, 2020. Yep, a whole almost six months later. Patches are really slowing down at this point. So what did they want to change? Another shooter buff. Oh joy, Splattershot can use its bomb and paint more. I'm sure that won't be more annoying later and it's totally unnecessary to change. Anyway, Luna Blaster buffs. Let's go. Four frames less end lag and decreased ink consumption so it can use its bomb more. Some people thought this might put Luna in a niche spot in the meta. It didn't, but it's still nice that they tried and gave Luna some pretty substantial buffs in the end, and I think it makes the weapon feel a lot more playable than it was. You know, it's a lot more than they did for Range Blaster. L3 would easily get the main nerf of this patch, both increasing its ink consumption by 15% and requiring more main power up to deal 99.9, though still a relatively low amount. Both the chargers that were being used at the time would also get nerfed, with Splat Charger having slightly reduced ink coverage, which is pretty substantial considering it already struggled to get a decent amount of specials, with both the high points for special and already pretty weak paint. Bamboo would require one extra sub of main power up. I told you we're gonna see this patch note a lot. Move along. Splashdown now also seemed to have like an infinite hitbox above it that would one shot. This had some situational use and was also kind of jank, but yeah, cool, I guess. And it broke baller easier. Speaking of baller, yeah, that was still really good in turf war and still kind of an annoying special to play against. So they also decreased its duration by a second, which I'd say is fair. Ten attack splatter shot got 10 less points for special. This didn't really matter, but you 
Japan really likes this weapon because it literally trended for getting 10 points for special buff and 8% more ink efficiency. I'm not joking. Some minor buffs to Hero Brush and End Parry Duelies for their ink jet output, but then nerfs to the L3 for Turf War, L3D for the main game, Bamboo for its missile output, Soda because it was pretty good and getting more uses, and Tenna Camo Umbrella because I guess tent still being used a bit, why not? The meta after this is extremely similar to the 5.0 with a little bit less charger, a little bit less bamboo, a little bit more ballpoint, a little bit more tent, and a bit less L3D. That's really about it. Mostly just some backline swapping around because of a bit of charger nerfs and a bit more tent because there's a bit less inkjet and baller. That's really it, honestly. So next patch would change that, however. On April 15, 2020, four months later, patch 5.2 would drop and have some pretty interesting changes. Flings a roller's vertical flick would be three frames faster, so it would paint even more and be a bit better at defending itself. Tri Slusher actually got a fire rate buff of two extra frames, which means it basically fires two frames faster, which means it paints better, it kills faster, it moves faster. Very big buff. Heavy got 6% less ground RNG. Nice. Dooley's painted a little bit better. Nice. Luga Dooley's have decreased ink consumption by 7%. Nice. Squiffer had a one frame faster charge time. Nice. So now a very weird change. The unscoped splat charger had the reduced time from releasing a charge to being ready to shoot again. So I guess like a full charge release and then either tap shotting or charging. I still can't really tell. And at the same time, they slightly narrowed the width of a full charge shot of scope chargers, which remains unchanged in splat chargers. So basically unscopes and scopes now paint the same despite scopes having slightly more range. And there's another small buff for unscopes. Very weird. They did this with the leaders as well. Ballpoint finally got its big nerf. They slightly reduced its shot velocity and they reduced the range of long range mode. It used to around match Hydra now it's slightly less. And they reduced the movement speed when charging and firing the weapon in close range mode by 10%. So basically they made it a substantial substantial bit worse in both modes. Ballpoint would still see some use, but this is basically the point where it fell from being a top tier splatling to a high tier, maybe you can argue top tier one, and its usage rate would fall off significantly. On top of that, with the increase in tents, Nintendo also wanted to deal with Tenabrella, in which they made it take 40 extra frames longer before you could regen the shield. So basically before, you could get up another shield pretty much instantly after the one was launched, and now there's a slight bit of a delay, which honestly is kind of fair because you could shield yourself so fast it was kind of ridiculous and I'm okay with this. Not sure if it needed the ink consumption nerf as well, but all right. They made Mist Effect Baller and then they made Ballers have weight classes. So if you play a lightweight weapon, your Baller is faster, mostly in turning. And if you play a heavyweight weapon, then you're slower when turning and moving and that only applied to Explo. So this patch secretly nerfed x -Blosher randomly, and they didn't change his points for special down from 220. I don't know why Nintendo doesn't like this weapon anymore, please. And, you know, on top of that, they also increased the time before it to explode by 16 frames. So basically, when you hold down the ZR button and you start an explosion, that takes an additional 16 frames in which the baller can be broken and it's easier to move out of the way. So if you've heard me talk about baller's special design and how it was really bad because it would be a panic button that could kill people, yeah, this was Nintendo's answer. Make it a panic button that very rarely, if ever, kills people. After that, they changed Bubble Blower, and I like this one. They made it so bubbles last an extra two seconds on the map, but they reduced the size of the first and second bubbles. Basically, this is a slight nerf to the bubble combo, but having bubbles last a long time got buffed. So, you know, how the special was intended to be used is better, and the cheap BS combo got worse. Points for special just saw Squeezer getting a bit more, L3 getting a bit more, CRB 10 less, that doesn't matter, and Ink Brush getting 20 more, finally. There's a lot of mixed opinions on this patch because of the outcome. There was definitely a bit lower weapon diversity. Nothing crazy, but it was more strict. And mainly we saw the rise of four weapons at the top, being the Sorel Umbrella, NZAP 85, Bamboo Mach 1, and Custom Dually Squatcher. There were definitely still a lot of other weapons. This is probably when Kensa Rapid was the best because despite the baller nerfs, everything else at the top tier was great for it. There was stuff like Squeezer, Chargers, Custom Jet, 
you know, a bunch more other weapons I could list. However, this is the final time in the meta where a dominant set of four weapons would be at the top, and you would fight a lot of that comp of the Zap, Sorella, Squelcher, Bamboo, or variants that would include Double Brella or Double Squelcher. However, the reason I say this is mixed is because a lot of people kind of like that. They were strong main weapons, even if MPU damage up was something to deal with, and special output was mostly lower. Now, yes, of course, Brella still was only 180, Squelcher wasn't 220 yet, so it wasn't perfect, but it was a lot less special output than we were used to with the previous updates, which I think honestly felt better. I think a lot of people would be split on either the 5.0 or 1, where things were more diverse, but a Bit more special spammy versus this patch where things were a bit less diverse but less special spammy on which is better. In my opinion it's the 5.2s but it could definitely be argued that it's either of them. To wrap up the patches in 2020 it was version 5.3.0 released on August 18th. Flattershot and 52 would get some small buffs basically making it so that the RNG spread takes a bit longer. Basically how all shooters work is when you start shooting they're very accurate and they gradually get less accurate. And this means the time before the accuracy is reset is smaller. However this is a pretty short patch and it's mainly here to nerf the main four weapons I mentioned previously, though a little bit light on the zap. Bamboo would get 20% increased ink consumption, which means it only had 11 instead of 14 shots on a full tank, making its output way lower. Dually Squelchers would get hit even harder, Rolls would use 8% instead of 5 of the ink tank, and the shots were a tiny bit harder to hit people with, meaning you had to be a little bit more accurate. However, Barella was the big nerf of this patch. 18 damage of each pellet was reduced to 16.2. This also means the max maximum damage that could be dealt was dropped from 90 to 81. Basically, a lot of the damage breakpoints were changed in this update for Brella, making it require one extra pellet to kill. And at long range, even with really good aim, it made two shots really unreliable and more often than not would require three shots to kill, which is incredibly slow and means if you're fighting at around a shooter range, you have much less pressure and Brella needs to get closer, even if it has amazing aim. The site's also missing it, but in addition to that, Brella went from 180 to 200, which was more than fair, it had a really high special output. This patch was a weird one because I felt like the meta never really developed that much from it. We saw more Neo Splash, we saw less of the 5.2 top tiers and more of the weapons at 5.0 and 1 minus ballpoint, of course, and I mean, it was fine, but it's hard to comment on because I feel like the next patch hit and changed things pretty much immediately. Version 5.4 would be released on February 25th, 2021. And yeah, there's a Splattershot Feet Paint buff, nobody cares. 52, increase radius of ink that lands when you shoot far away by 27%. Originally, people didn't think a lot of this when they were translating it from Japanese because they thought it was general paint buff, which while it's a lot, would not be too much. However, this is not just a paint buff, this is a painting range buff. Not only do you paint better, but you paint further away and therefore more safely. So this catapulted 52 ahead with its Kensa kit, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Dapples and normal dualies had less ink consumption when firing. H3 actually got a huge ink consumption increase, I guess because it's an MPU weapon, but it never saw more popularity than Zap, so I don't know. I guess the devs just don't like it. Dually Squelcher got an extra 25% jump spread immediately after jumping, which also made the roll tech harder, as there was a tighter window to pull it off without getting RNG. And while it's not on the English page, Squeezer also got an increased ink consumption in its painting mode by 20%, which, while not exactly the ink hungry is quite a lot. Torpedo took an extra eight frames before you could recover ink after throwing torpedo, and in the points for special changes, there were some small nice ones to K Jr. and Kunder. Firefin got an extra 10, E Leader got an extra 10, and Dually Squelchers got an extra 10 points for special. So this kicked off the quad shooter meta. K52 was totally a weapon that was dealt with best by shooters and completely countered non-shooters. It was really hard to break wall with all the ink efficiency nerfs. You were dependent on a bomb, which was also harder with all the ink efficiency nerfs, and Kgal could paint super safely, super far, and get a reliable special output. Also at this point, all of the strong weapons that countered shooters with the exception of Nautilus, which got dealt with by special spam, were pretty much nerfed. Brella being the main culprit that would keep shooters back quite a bit, and now it was a lot easier to either avoid it or deal with it using specials. I've talked a lot about quad shooter meta and how we got here in this video, so I'm not going to mention it a ton here, so if you want to learn more about it, check it out. But let's just go into 5.5 and what it adjusted. Version 5.5 released on September 24th, 2021, and is likely the final balance patch Splatoon 2 will ever get. There was a small buff to Splattershot that increased its damage 
damage, meaning a sub a bomb defense would not stop a bomb plus two shots killing, and it also made the fall off damage a little bit better. Roller, Octobrush, and Dooley's all got better ink consumption, and 52's paint from far away was reduced by 5%, making the previous buff of 27 the equivalent of 22%. Still a lot, but it is slightly easier to deal with. There's a lot of points for special changes, and the buffs aren't really as notable, though they are nice, but with the nerfs, Kgal got an extra 10 points for special, reducing its Bia output, Seajet finally got nerfed a little bit in Ray output, Squeezer with Bubbles, and E-Leader with Rain. And that brings us today. Quad Shooter is the meta, but many other comps and weapons can still work. And the game is what the devs wanted it to be at the start. Very coordination-based and team-reliant. I'll be honest, this wasn't the perfect direction from the game. I think we all know that by now, and there are a lot of things that needed adjustments, and we're seeing it with Splatoon 3. And I still hope we get a 5.6 and they do a little bit more. Reducing missile output a tiny bit, maybe having armor be a lighter duration, something similar to what they did with invincibilities at the end of Splatoon 1, would just go a long way. I don't hate the current meta where it is, honestly, even as someone who doesn't play any shooters. I think just some small adjustments would go a long way to making people appreciate the things it does well, so I kinda hope we get that even though I'm not expecting it. Could the same goal have been achieved better? Absolutely. But it was certainly hard. Splatoon 1 wasn't exactly left in a perfectly balanced state, and the devs had to do a lot of work in Splatoon 2, which is something we might take for granted nowadays. This game used to be very unbalanced. I think the devs have learned a lot from this game, and Splatoon 3 will be a better direction with better balance. But regardless, appreciate the Splatoon 2 meta for the things it does well, because it is honestly still pretty cool and far from bad. But with that being said, we've covered everything about the meta history of Splatoon 2. I have one more episode before Splatoon 3's, which is the finale for Splatoon 1, the damage defense meta, and the quick respawn meta at the end of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in another video.